everyone. Hope you're all well. My name's Brandon Tilly of Smart Business Solutions Accounting. Now, with 30 June quickly approaching, um, we've seen some clients coming to ask and asking how they deal with the bookkeeping side of the fixed asset they've purchased um, and how to make the most of the fixed asset write off within zero. So, we thought we'd record a quick video to take you through all the nuances that are involved. These are my details here. The best way to get in contact with me is to shoot me through an email. We can go through and discuss the issues you're having or set a time for a call um, and go from there. So a brief agenda. Look, most of this will be done in zero, but I thought I'd cover off on the agenda and then we'll get into it. So I'm going to go through the support documentation and where you can put it in zero so that your account can access it, creating a bill, reconciling a deposit, reconciling the finance. Um, and then finally recording the fixed asset. I'll we'll jump across to zero now. We're just gonna start out by creating the bill. So we're gonna go to business, bills to pay. And we're just gonna go new bill here. Now in this scenario, we're gonna say that on the 1st of May, I went down to Frankston Toyota and I purchased a Toyota Hilux second hand. Now the Toyota Hilux cost me $40,000. Um, and Franks and Toyota asked for a $2,000 deposit on the day, um, and then I entered into a finance agreement with Toyota Frankston. So these are the details we've put in so far. In here, we're just going to put Toyota, we'll call it a 2018, for the sake, Toyota Hilux. Total price was $40,000 inclusive of GST. What we're going to do is we're going to allocate that to the motor vehicle fixed asset account. So that looks good. That's all the information we need there. Um, if you wanted to, you could break it down further to give um, us, your accountants, some further information. So you might say, pay a deposit of $2,000 and then arranged clients for 38000 So we're happy with that. Before we approve it, what we want to do to make your our, us as your accountant's life as easy as possible um, and also make sure we're not hassling you to get documents off you, we're going to include the documents within this bill. So if you come to this little icon here and you're going to upload files. Now the files you want to upload, um, there's probably two key ones. The first one is the invoice that Toyota Frankston will give you. Um, the invoice will break down the purchase price of the car, any GST attached, any expenses that were related to on-road costs, so it might be registration or something like that. Um, now, we'll need those calculations when it comes to year end. And then the other one you want to attach, if you get finance, that is, is the finance contract. The finance contract will include things like the total amount financed, um, the total interest payments over the life of the finance, the life of the loan, and how regularly you're making to repayments and what that repayment is. Um, so if you're able to attach those there, that will stop us chasing your, your end for those documents because we'll be able to access them too. Um, and it just makes things that little bit smoother. So we're gonna pretend that I've attached them and we're going to approve the bill. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to the dashboard and we're gonna reconcile the deposit we paid. So you can see here, the 2nd of May, $2,000 came out of the bank account for our deposit. So we're going to match that against the bill. And we're just gonna tick the bill and then split, and then you'll be able to part pay the $2,000. So we've still got $38,000 outstanding, and that comes from the finance. So to deal with that, we're gonna go to the chart of accounts and we're gonna create a loan account for that finance. So we're gonna to come to liabilities and you'll scroll down and you'll see that there's no loan accounts, there's no current liabilities, no non-current liabilities. So we're gonna add an account. It's gonna be a non-current liability. As for the code, we'll just make it 885. We're gonna call it higher purchase liability Toyota Hilux. Now look, the name of this isn't doesn't always have to be high purchase liability. That is just how we do it. Um, you could just put in loan and we'll come through and tidy it all up at the end of the financial year. 
Once you've done that, it's important to tick this box, enable payments to this account. I'll show you why in a minute, um, but it's important to tick that. I'm sorry, one more thing. I'll just jump back into this high purchase liability. It's gonna be BAS excluded um, as well. So the repayments you're making are all GST free or BAS excluded because we're claiming the GST at the time of the purchase. Um, so it's important to ensure that is BAS excluded. So now we've created that account, we're gonna go back to our bills and we're gonna make a payment for the remaining 38,000. So we come here. So on the 1st of May, the finance went through and the payment was made. Now, so we'll put the date in, we've got the full amount there. The payment was made from the high purchase liability Toyota Hilux account. That box that I asked you to tick, that allows us to pay the bill directly from here. And we're gonna add payment. So that bill's now paid. What that does to our balance sheet is twofold. So one side of the entry is the motor vehicle. So the motor vehicle less GST cost us 36,363. Um, the GST is obviously allocated to the GST account. And then we've got this high purchase liability. We have $38,000 outstanding. Now, at the end of the financial year, we will calculate your interest payable and prepare a repayment schedule. And then we will make a couple of altercations to this. But for now, that is all you need to do. The next one I want to cover is what to do with the repayments. So let's say in the finance agreement we entered into, we entered into a, a four year loan paying once a month, $512.50. So this is the first repayment. Now we know it's gonna come out every month the same day, the same amount. So we're gonna create a bank rule for it, obviously just to speed this up for us. So the payee is going to um, contain Toyota Finance. The amount, this is probably the important one, we actually get rid of, we keep the payee is gonna to contain Toyota Finance, but the amount must be equal to $512.50. We're gonna pay that every month for the 48 months across the four year life. Um, we're just gonna put Toyota Finance in. That's the contact, the account we're paying it to. Now this is always gonna be allocated to the higher purchase liability account and as BAS excluded. I'll show you the effect of that in a moment. The rest of that looks good, so we're just gonna save that. Now each month when the finance repayment comes out, we'll just be able to click okay. We don't have to worry about anything else. What that does, we jump over here. And we'll change that to today and I'll show you the effect in the account. So you can see here, what was $38,000 when we purchased the vehicle has now been reduced by $512.50 and each month that will continue. Now the last thing you can do um, is register the fixed assets. So if you go to accounting and fixed assets, You can see here the 2018 Toyota Hilux paid a deposit of. So that's our asset in draft. So we're just gonna click on that. And we're gonna to need to complete some details. So purchase date, purchase price is what we entered into the bill, less GST. Um, asset type. Now you might already have an asset type in there, you might not. So you can set up an asset type here. The asset type is just gonna be motor vehicles. And we're just going to put in the account. Motor vehicles is the asset account. Motor vehicles, less accumulated depreciation is the accumulated depreciation account. And this one will be depreciation. Now, these settings don't matter too much. Um, we will come through and look at them at the end of the financial year and make sure they're correct and make the changes required. But you can just put um, diminishing value and 20% in. And the depreciation start date is the date of purchase, the 1st of May. And we're just gonna register it. Simple as that. You'll see here, you've now got a fixed asset registered. Um, one thing you can do is edit the fixed asset um, and remove the name. Just so it, it, it just is a 2018 put highlights and doesn't include the um, further narration we put through. 
Look, and then what we will do is at the end of the financial year, we'll come through as your account, we're preparing your annual account, and we will write that off um, under the instant asset write-off. So look, that's a brief, pretty brief overview of how to do it. Um, essentially, the main things we're looking for as your accountant is to have that source documentation attached to that bill. Um, that makes our job as easy as possible. We don't have to go back and forth with you. We can just log in, see the documentation there, pick it up and make any changes required. Now look, if you've got any questions, um, please don't hesitate to reach out. As I said, email is probably the best place to start and then we'll go from there. So thank you for watching.